Hey Gearholics, it's me Gearholic here. Today I'm doing a new review. Today's review is going to be over the Jeff White French style trading knife. The French trade knife was made popular during the fur trade years of 1700s to mid 1800s. During this time period, beaver fur hats and fur blankets were in high demand in Europe, and the new American continent was their main source for supply. After the Lois and Clark expedition of 1806, voyagers and European fur trappers pursued new riches deep into the unknown wilderness of the, the new Western America. Trading became essential during this time period as it helped build alliances and maintain relations between the different cultures. Axe heads, knives, awls, fish hooks, wool blankets, jewelry, muskets, and gunpowder were very popular trade items during this time period. Trading these items helped trappers gain respect with the natives along with access to lush trapping grounds and a wealth of knowledge of the area. Eventually demand dropped after beaver fur hats went out of style in the mid-1800s, bringing the once popular fur trade to an end. But the French trade knife remained a popular tool for trade and served trappers well due to its functional utilitarian design. Jeff White, the creator and designer of this knife, um, based the knife design on an old traditional style knife that I think he either owned or found or maybe saw a picture of, um, which basically is what this design comes from, which is pretty awesome because you know that it has those traditional qualities behind it and you know it shows a traditional style as well. Um, so it looks very old school, like almost like it fell out of the sky from the 1800s right into your hands. So you're almost owning like a piece of history. So let's talk real quick about the actual blade itself. The five and a quarter inch blade, uh, it's got a lot of room on it to do a lot of different tasks, which is really great. Um, makes it very utilitarian. Um, it is a convex grind on the actual blade. So um, the convex grind is really well done, very even on both sides, um, very highly finished and polished. Good construction. You can tell that they spent a lot of time grinding on this blade. And the treatment, the heat treat on this blade, which is, uh, um, I'm not sure what kind of heat treat they do, but it is just really well done. And it's it's a really rock hard, solid blade, but very easy and mild to sharpen, which is, which is what you really want, I guess, in an outdoor blade. They've hand polished the entire uh, blade. So you can see that polished edge that goes all the way up to the tip. Um, and it's been, you know, buffed and then it's dropped. It's just, they did such a great job on that. I'm just so impressed. The, the finish on it is just that oxidized finish, natural carbonized finish. They just kind of left on during the whole process of, uh, of putting the heat treat on. Um, and you can tell that, I mean, this thing, and this thing is really sharp, really uh, got a really good point on it. Um, very thick, very, very thick knife. Uh, good for doing a lot of different tasks and chores. I mean, look how reinforced that tip is. Um, very good, very good tip. The back of the spine is a uh, 90 degree angle spine. So um, you can use it for throwing a lot of sparks and it's very sharp, or you can also use it for scraping on wood and getting some really good wood, um, kind of some good wood shavings, some very fine to throw some sparks into. Um, and that being said, with that 1095, you're probably gonna be able to throw a lot of sparks off there with a fierce seam rod or some sort of fire steel. Next thing I'm going to talk about is the handle. Uh, handle is made out of curly maple. Uh, beautiful curly maple. Maple. They really took their time to uh, select each piece of wood and uh, put it on the actual knife. Ground very, very well done. Uh, full tang, which is awesome. So it's a full tang knife. Um, that curly maple feels really good in the hand. It looks really beautiful. 
as well. And as long as you keep it up and keep it oiled, and even if you wanted to do some aftermarket sanding, some modification on it, um, you could probably do that as well. Um, I really just like the way it looks, kind of more like a steak knife, really rough used blade. Um, I really like that. Um, and it's obviously held in with three brass brass rivet pins. The only complaint that I have about this knife um, is going to be, there's two things. The handle is really kind of short. I really wish they'd push this knife out to nine and a half inches or even, yeah, nine and a half inches would have been nice. Um, because this blade, when I put my hands on, which is, I have a large size hands, it does fill my hand, but it's so close to that blade and it's so close to that edge right there that I always worry about slipping up and onto the blade. But if you get one, you might want to think about maybe modifying that and maybe making that a little less sharp. I have already kind of swept up onto it and cut myself right there in the fold of my finger, um, just messing around with it. The last thing that I would like to talk about is the fact that they come in at a 90 degree angle right here. Um, coming in at a 90 degree angle right here in the blade kind of puts a lot of stress on this point. Uh, making this the area that's most likely going to crack um, if you start batoning with this on a regular basis. But if you have to baton with it all the time, you're eventually you're going to break this blade and it's going to happen right here. Um, coming in at a 90 degree angle like that is never really a good idea for a blade that's a full tang, um, especially if you're going to be using it for batoning or any kind of real woodwork. You really want to make this a, a kind of a rounded shape right here, and that's going to increase the handle strength and durability of that blade um, and make it a lot less susceptible to breaking or snapping, um, but it doesn't obviously make it foolproof. One last thing I would like to talk about is the sheath. So this blade did not come with a sheath, um, so I had to make one. And so what I came up with is a uh, pretty awesome design. It's just a cowboy style Indian kind of sheath. I kind of based it off some designs I saw online um, while looking at French trading knives and other things. I'm a simpleton when it comes to making leather sheaths, and this is a pretty good sheath, I guess, for, for me to make it uh, in an afternoon, kind of sitting down and, and making it. It's a triple layer of leather. Um, it's been single stitched, very kind of pocket size um, stitching. You know, it's just a, it's basically just a big pocket. And then uh, obviously over here, I didn't put any third piece because I didn't feel like I needed it. Um, and it holds it in there really well. I mean, this thing is not coming out of the sheath or anything. Um, and I did put a hole through here with uh, a little bit of uh, synth uh, synthetic sinew um, for sliding onto your belt, kind of holding it belt, belt style. My final thoughts are it's a really well-made knife. Highly recommend it. It's up there probably in my top five knives right now um, for usage. It's really utilitarian, functional. Um, it's, you know, it can do pretty much anything a knife that you would expect it to do. And that's what's just so incredible about it and how cheap it really was and how, you know, affordable. That's that's a that's always a selling point with me. And just the, the way it looks is just awesome. It looks like a really well-made traditional style knife. Um, looks like it can probably take on anything uh, that you throw at it. Please don't forget to hit subscribe or like if you enjoyed the video. But if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. And I will try to get back to them uh, as soon as possible. As I always say, be safe out there guys, and try not to catch yourselves. I'm Gearholic, and I'm signing out. Later.